Hello, and welcome to the Books Uncovered podcast, a brand new podcast from Fulcrum Publishing, where we explore the world of books and the people who make up the publishing industry. I'm Sam Shinta, publisher at Fulcrum Publishing, and I'm joined this week by my co-host, Kelly Jervey, Fulcrum's marketing associate. Hello, Kelly. How are you today? Hi, good to be here. I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm doing great. Thank you. Trying to stay cool amidst all this heat and humidity that we have just been, uh, I think, nationwide suffering through lately. And uh, here in the upper Midwest, it's no different. We're getting a lot of it. Yeah, definitely. Lots of pools and sprinklers and outdoor time to find ways to cool down. So so you've been running the sprinkler. That's your that's your hot tip here. To yes. Just get out there, <laughs> get out in the bathing suit, sit in the yard, maybe with the book and just let your feet get wet and keep cool. Absolutely. Awesome. Excellent. Well, we speaking of books, we have a wonderful guest uh, today uh, who's going to talk with us about a, a little different aspect of the, the, book, the publishing industry than what we've talked about thus far. Our guest today is Beth Hartung. Beth Hartung uh, hails from rural Wisconsin. She attended UW La Crosse and for her undergraduate degree and then taught in Japan for 10 years before returning to La Crosse to complete a master's degree. Since then, she has worked mostly in the education and health communities, focusing her work on justice and equities in her community and in the state. Throughout her life, books have served her by opening her mind to a better understanding of the world and providing her with hours and hours of gentle escapes. Opening a bookstore, Pearl Street Books, offered her an opportunity to continue her justice work and to continue to help build community in La Crosse through the curation of important and relevant as well as enjoyable books. Welcome, Beth Hartung. How are you today? I'm well, thank you. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, you are uh, the new owner or the relatively new owner of Lacrosse's Pearl Street Bookstore. And so the first question that comes to mind, uh, I've now been in the publishing industry for about 25 years is, why jump into the craziest industry in the nation? Why, why come in and, and buy a, a bookstore? That's a great question. Um, it was, you know, a lot of people say owning a bookstore has been their childhood dream. And I've always dreamt of being able to surround myself with books. I've also wanted to be able to um, engage with a community and get to know a community really well. And so it felt like a really good fit to, um, by this well-established bookstore in Japan, in La Crosse, Wisconsin, that has really been a cornerstone of our community, and to try to grow that cornerstone. Well, yeah. and when I say crazy industry, I, I of course am doing that with a lot of love because all of us in the right. publishing industry obviously are coming into this with a lot of love. But but it, it is a, certainly a tough business. And so Pearl Street Books, I, you know, I'm I'm familiar with, and I think many of our listeners who've been through the the Upper Mississippi have, have maybe stopped in the store historically has mostly been used books as a, a, a big, big selection of lots and lots of used books. And one of the things that, that I'm really loving about your new store is the fact that you're building out all the new books and uh, really developing a whole new book section. Why did you decide to take the store in that direction? Well, I think it's really, the used books still fit my philosophy of trying to have um, affordable books for accessible to all people. So I still want to have become be a predominantly used bookstore, but there's so many good new books out there that um, can offer us so much learning and understanding and so many escapes that I don't want to wait until they're used. And I don't want our customers to wait until they're used to be able to purchase them. So for me, it only made sense to start offering a more new books as well. So right now we're at, I mean, not in number, but in sales, about a third of our sales are new and two thirds are still used. Oh, fantastic. Well, that's, and, but, and have you noticed that that has been trending up for you? Yes, absolutely. And, and the more, the better I'm getting, I'm still so new at my job. I mean, I've been very good at selecting books for myself, but now this job, <laughs> big part of it is selecting books for other people. You know, what do they want to read? What does my community want to read? What does somebody traveling through stopping in La Crosse for gas and a walk along the river? What do they want to read? And trying to figure that out and make that happen has been a challenge, but a fun one. And um, so, yes, we're seeing a huge trend in selling new books. It's, it's growing every month. 
So you mentioned that, you know, trying to figure out what your community is looking for, what the, the town is looking, the city is looking for, what people coming through are looking for. How do you, how do you personally do that? I've talked with lots of booksellers over the years and everybody has their own technique. How are you approaching trying to figure this out? Well, I've started an advisory committee. Um, it's very, very informal, but I picked my most, um, I would say, diverse group of friends in lacrosse, people that I've worked with through my other previous employment or, or have been friends with, or some customers that I've just gotten to know at the store. And I ask them, in fact, I will give them a few books to read that they are interested in and that they have to give me feedback in exchange for it and tell me what to put on the shelves. And I ask customers that I don't even know, what do you wish you would have seen here? And of course, I can't buy every single book like that, but you can start hearing about the same book over and over again, or the same author over and over again, that you just know you have to have then. Yeah. And then the usual things of reading online lists and, you know, trying to inform myself that way as well. Yeah, definitely. That, that sounds like a good, good way to do that. It's something that keeps coming up and something that I keep hearing from you, Beth, is um, the word community. Um, and I, as part of um, Pearl Street Books logo at the bottom, for people who don't know, um, it's the logo for Pearl Street Books is a tree. Um, and then I have a little <laughs> bookmark that I got um, and it says rooted in community. What does rooted in community mean to you to Pearl Street Books? And how does that go um, along with, you know, selecting books, the bookstore in general? Thank you for asking. Thank you for showing the logo. I, I absolutely adore that logo. And we chose a tree because if you look outside, right outside of our door, there's trees on the floor as you walk outside in aisles from the old shoe store. And it's an oak tree. And I, my understanding is that the oak tree was used in creating the leather for the shoes. So that's why they had a tree. And then the previous owner had just really a very simple tree logo as well. Well, I wanted one that really represented like history and wisdom and fantasy and um, just imagination. And so a friend, family friend created that tree for us. And the Rooted in Community is about identifying the values of our bookstore that reflect, like the Driftless area, reflects our community, um, the issues that are facing our community, making sure that they're represented in the store, but also a place, there's very few third places anymore where people can just come and gather and talk and exchange ideas. And I really want a bookstore that people don't feel like they have to come in and buy. I'm so happy if they come in and just pick up a used book and go upstairs and read for a while or sit in a corner and read um, or sit and talk with someone or write their next novel. I really want this to be a place where people can come and be and feel welcome and recognized as being a part of our community. Beth, you just used a, a phrase here that uh, I've, I've heard our, our good friend Rick Kite use many times, third mm -hmm. places. Uh, for those folks that aren't familiar with that, could you maybe talk a little bit about what that means and, and why that is so important? Well, you know, the community commons, there used to be places where people could gather. I mean, a front porch, I've read books and articles about how the front porch really has killed neighborhoods because a front porch was a place where people would see their neighbors and say hello. And on a hot day like tonight, hot evening like tonight, they'd be sitting out there drinking a glass of lemonade. But then we moved to the back patios, the back decks, and we no longer know our neighbors. Well, the same is true of neighborhood of communities. There's no places where you can go without having to spend money. Um, if you go to a coffee shop, I mean, coffee shops maybe will let you in there for a little while without spending money on a cup of coffee, but really you're expected to buy something. Um, libraries even to rent space there. Libraries are still our best third place, but oftentimes the community rooms now have to be reserved and there's some hoops that you have to jump through to get to them. College campuses, schools are closed off now for safety reasons and they're not open to the public. And so it's trying to find places where people can gather without having to spend money. Wonderful to hear, you know, that about having that space for people to come together and um, yeah. I, so what we, has been the response of the community thus far? I mean, you're, you're rooted in community, you're trying to build community. So how has that manifested? Our community has been amazing through COVID. I, we are stronger than ever as a 
or uh, business. Um, every month we're doing better. We're selling more books. We're busier. There are some Saturdays that feel like a Saturday in December, but it's in April or May or June. Um, Independent Bookstore Day was unbelievable from mm. the very moment we opened until we stayed open until 8 p.m. But from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., our store was packed all day long. It felt like I was in downtown Chicago in a bookstore. And so, I mean, and that happens throughout the week now. It's not just a Saturday that we're busy. We're busy on a Monday or a Wednesday. So our community is coming out for us and supporting us and buying local. And it helps that we live on, or we're located. I say live because I spend so much time here and I love this place so much. We're located on a street that's just really the heart of downtown La Crosse on Pearl Street. There's a great um, hardware store right next door. There's a coffee shop next door and a million other great shops on the street. Not a million, I'm exaggerating. But I always tell people, if you can't find it on Pearl Street, you don't need it, hmm. with the exception of the um, food co-op. isn't located, but it's close by. And so why, why do you think that you've been able to thrive in COVID while so many other businesses have been struggling? What, what do you think is the, the secret sauce there? I think it's the three C's or four C's actually we've added to a C to it. It's, it's about that community. Um, trying, I, you know, I say to staff, try to those repeat customers, try to get to know their name, remember what they like to read. It's gotta be natural. <laughs> and, but I, that great gr growing community in the store is so important. And then that customer service, we greet every customer that comes in, we offer them help and we try to gauge, do they want help or do they just want to browse? Because this store is overwhelming. And I was shocked by how many people say, tell me they've been here before, but they still don't know how we're, um, where to find things or how to tell the price of our books. And so that first greeting is so important. And so people would tell me they've been here, but they would just walk out. They'd browse around a little bit and give up and walk out. So customer service, I think, is really important because it's so easy to buy a book on Amazon. I'm sorry, that other place <laughs> um, and have it delivered right to your door. So the, you have to give them a reason, that really good shopping experience as a reason to come into our store. And then the curation of books. We're doing a lot more mm -hmm. curating in, of our books. The expansion of new, new books additionally has made a difference for people to come back. And then also a place for convening. You know, we're letting people have events. We're letting them hold meetings here. Um, we are hosting events now as we're coming out of COVID, hopefully coming out of COVID. And so I think those four C's have been really, really important to help us thrive. I don't know, somebody pointed out that we have a, a ESOL chalkboard in front of our store now that we put out every day, rain or shine, snow, whatever, unless it's too windy. And that just welcomes people in and we'll put some, try to put something clever on it to let them know that we're a store and that maybe make them curious. And we're also doing more window displays to try to draw people in. So I think it's a combination of ultimately just giving this place a lot of love and it reflects back. And that curation point, um, you know, when I uh, came in a few weeks ago, that was something you and I talked quite a bit about. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't try to carry everything. Uh, and, and I think this is one of the things that this distinguishes so many outstanding independent booksellers across the country, is they don't try to ca carry every single book. Again, they are very curated. They select with intention the books that they carry. With that in mind, what, what areas have you found in this upper Midwest area that's, that people seem to be very interested in right now? Um. Definitely books on nature and environment uh, are selling. We just, uh, that's probably what we sell the most, the topic. Um, the other thing is works in translation. For me, that has been reading books that weren't originally in English was one of the most transformational things that has ever happened in my life, getting exposed to different literature. And so I've really want to do that at this store as well. And so really trying to grow that and that I'm finding more and more success with it. And then, boy, those are probably our two biggest areas. And then just general romance. Unbelievably, we're selling so much romance in the last three, four months. I think people just want to escape, mm -hmm. you know, really lighthearted books and I had never seen our store as being that store, but
but we had so many people requesting it that we actually have it right out front on a table now and kind of with the more lighthearted stuff. Excellent. So, um, you know, you've been doing this uh, almost a year now. Uh, you, you took over the store last fall, correct? Last October? Correct. Okay. Um, what has, uh, two questions here. One, what has surprised you the most? And, and two, and maybe there's some overlap, what has been the most challenging thing that you've had to deal with since taking over the store? The surprise is two different things. It's the, I mean, are, they're related. The getting to know the customer. So a customer that comes in every single Saturday and then they don't show up for two Saturdays and you worry about them. And I don't even know their last name. I have no way of getting a hold of them, but that that community part that surprises me. It's like, oh, so and so wasn't in today. Did you see so and so? And and that that happens. I and mean, there's some elderly people that I, that especially that I, I think to worry about a little bit. And I don't know if they have anyone that's kind of checking in on them. So that was a little bit of a surprise. But also, I've bought out some estates, and where I've gotten 12, 13, 14 boxes of books from someone. And going through their books and how intimate that experience is, I wasn't prepared for. It's really emotionally, it, it's not a negative thing, but it's, it's a bit of a challenge of how you get to know someone and find little tidbits of their life in a book. I just wasn't prepared for that. And I think it would make a great book about this experience. The most difficult part is probably the kind of this imposter syndrome that I still have <laughs> of someone that, can I really be a bookstore owner, a bookseller? You know, who am I to tell people what, what are good books to read? And I had never read the classics until I was well into my 20s. And I never discussed them with anybody. I read them while I was living in Japan. And in Japan, I just would read anything I could find on in, in English because that was my connection back to the English world because I lived in a rural part of Japan where Japanese was all around me and I had no one who spoke English around me. Um, so I, I know the classics, but oftentimes I don't even know how to pronounce the author's names. So there's a little bit of imposter syndrome going on, quite a bit of it yet at times. I don't know much about the publishing world. I, you already, Sam, have helped me so much and I appreciate that. And I look forward to learning more about the publishing world through you. So there's so much I don't know, and that's a challenge, but I love learning and I'm a quick learner. So I, I'm up for the challenge, but it's, uh, it is a little bit overwhelming at times. Those, those are great answers. And, and, and you know, it really does it, to, to kind of understand your limits, right? Or to know what you mm -hmm. know, but to also importantly know what you don't know uh, in any business, but certainly in the book trade is so key because even, you know, having been in this for 25 years, there's still so much I'm learning all the time, so much I don't know. I just uh, went to sales conference the last uh, couple of days and picked up all sorts of new information to, to, to act on. Uh, so that's what makes this industry, I think, so dynamic across the board from the, the publishing to the selling of the books is there is still always more to learn. Um, and it's funny, you mentioned the community piece about the people who come in the store. Uh, I'm a serial bookstore uh, visitor. And uh, I've always had to be very careful to make sure to introduce myself to bookstore staff because of the nature of my job, I will spend a lot of time in bookstores. I'm interested in what people are buying, what other covers look like, how books are presented, uh, what people are putting, what, what booksellers are putting out to sell. And so I'll, I'll go in a couple times of the week into various bookstores. And, and I'm, I'm sure at times they're thinking, okay, here's this person casing the joint, probably trying to, you know, shoplift or something. I'm going, no, 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 really, I've got a real reason to be in here. <laughs> so if you see me in there, that's, that's what I'm doing. I'm just checking it all, all right. <laughs> now that I know what you look like without a mask on. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um. So as Sam mentioned a little bit ago, um, Pearl Street Books came under your ownership back in October. Um, and so I'm wondering, you know, there are probably lots of different things that you're learning. I'm newer to the book world as well and newer to publishing. Um, there's a concept that I've heard going around um, 
called hand selling. Are you familiar with hand selling? And could you maybe explain a little bit about that? I think I know what it means, but I'm not sure if, if I, if I'm, I've never heard that term before, but my hunch is where you actually take the book and show it to someone and talk to them about the book. And because of what you say, they person buys the book. Is that what it means? Yeah. You got it right on, right on the money. Okay. Yeah. That's, and, and this is why that relationship between bookseller and publisher is so important. Uh, and for publishers, it's so important for us to understand the culture of every independent bookstore to the extent that we can, because we want to make sure to give you the right books to be hand selling, right? Mm -hmm. Not to, so that the books that we sell. So I, I think when Beth, when you and I talked a few weeks ago, I, I pointed out, I don't want you to buy all of Fulcrum's titles. I want to make sure that we are looking at this as a curated sale for you, as well as you're mm -hmm. looking for a curated selection, because then you succeed and you're able to then feel really enthusiastic about the things you have so that you can do that hand selling. Hey, I know this customer, or this person's looking for this, try this book. It, that's actually probably the funnest part of the job. I've got to be honest. I get, to, I finish a book and able to talk about it or a book that I just loved as a child or a book that I loved in my twenties and to be able to talk about that with other people. And then they buy them. I remember soon after I purchased the store, this woman from spring green area came in to the store and she was just in town because of her son's girlfriend actually. And she wanted some books to read. So she wanted me to recommend And We walked around the store and I was just pointing, oh, this book's really good. This book's really good talking to her a little bit about them. And she was picking up every single one that I was pointing to. And I said, do you want me to stop now? She said, no, keep going. And so I just kept going. And I assumed she was going to come up to the mezzanine and kind of look through and pick two or three. She bought every single one. And it was so amazing. Um, new and used. And then she messaged back on Facebook about the ones that she really loved. And we talked, we discussed a little bit about them and it was so much fun. So that hand selling is, is really, really fun. Now I have a, term to call know what I'm doing yeah and the message the little notes we put around our store do that as well help sell the books mm -hmm. yeah hand selling sounds so impersonal but um I know when I go into bookstores I love that relationship part and hearing more about books and really hearing it come alive so I definitely like that relationship building piece yeah when you start to get to know a customer and they you know they like a certain type of book and then I find one or I get one into the store, I'll hold it because I know like this person's going to be back within a week or two. And then when they walk in and say, hey, look what I have for you. I think you might like it. And sometimes they'll pass, but oftentimes they'll be like, oh my gosh, this is perfect. And it's really fun. Really, really fun. I don't know if I shared the story with you, Sam, or not, but it, it's lessening because I think I'm just getting used to it. But first three, four months, every morning I would wake up and I'd have that feeling like you had was a child and it was your birthday. And you'd have, you'd remember as you were getting out of bed, oh, it's my birthday today. And you'd be so excited. I would think I own a bookstore <laughs> and I get to work at a bookstore today. And that thrill was just amazing. Well, that is wonderful. I feel the same way about publishing. It's, oh yeah, I get to go work with authors on creative ideas today. And you know, mm -hmm. how fun is that to just be in the world of books? all the yeah. time. Yeah, we're lucky. Um, well, kind of bringing um, things full circle, um, we had talked about um, early on people's dream of like owning a bookstore. I can definitely count myself, myself among that group of people. Um, what would you say your favorite part of owning Pearl Street Books has been? Has it been everything that you dreamed? <laughs> oh yeah, and more. And more, it's the relationships with the people. I have met so many interesting people, so many interesting people. And a lot of them, I only know their first name. Um, I have no idea, you know, beyond what they love to read and, and, you know, a little bit more, but they're just such interesting conversations that I get to have every single day. And you never know who's going to walk in the door. And it, it's just, it's really, it's a wonderful job. And I love the, the physicality of it, too. I love the fact that I'm moving all day and um, lifting. And a desk job really sucked. <laughs> it was just horrible to be sitting at a desk. Um, 
I grew up on a farm where I was active from early morning until late at night. So I feel like this is next best thing to farming as far as moving. And it is a very physical job. I, I was a little bit surprised by that. You're on your feet all day long. Oh, One you... other thing, I, sorry. Oh, go, no, go ahead, no, please. The, being able to read for a living. I, I haven't mentioned that, but now I don't have to feel guilty about reading, it's my job. Dishes can wait. Well, now I want to go out and buy a bookstore. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and you know, speaking of, of getting to read and, and earlier we were talking about recommending books, my favorite pa part of every one of these podcasts is what I call, Hey, What You Reading, where we talk with our guests about books that they recommend. And uh, I try to uh, do this by a category every time based on the, the person we have on. And so this week, uh, what I'm interested in, uh, or what we're, we're interested in here is uh, books about or from the upper Midwest. And so Beth, why don't we go ahead and start with you? What, what are you reading or what have you read recently that really has impacted you from that area? Uh, the Seed Keeper by uh, Diane Wilson is, is outstanding. It's about a, um, it's a haunting novel spanning several generations of a Dakota family in Minnesota. And the story is about remembering the connection to this cache of seeds and what it meant to the family through generations and reconnecting and learning from the origin of where this, the main character came from. And it's just beautiful. It's just a beautiful story. It's a little bit heart-wrenching at times, but yet joyful. And I love that it didn't end real tidy. I, I like to imagine how the future, you know, what might happen next, it, it's, it's an outstanding book. I read it in one sitting, which to me is kind of the, if I sit down and don't refuse to get up or refuse to go to bed and just keep reading, it tells you it's a really outstanding book. And that's what it was for me. Excellent choice. Uh, Kelly, how about yourself? Um, well, what I've been reading recently from the upper Midwest is Wisconsin Literary Luminaries um, by Jim Higgins. Um, he is the arts and books editor of the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Um, and what in the book, he explores um, 10 different authors from Wisconsin, uh, their history, um, some of their more well-known works. Um, each chapter covers a different author and um, everybody from Laura Ingalls Wilder to Aldo Leopold, um, some more contemporary authors like uh, Jane Hamilton. Um, but my favorite chapter, I mean, all 10 chapters were great, um, but my favorite chapter was the one on Ellen Raskin, um, who wrote The Westing Game. Um, I had no idea she was born in Milwaukee, um, so that was really interesting to read about her life and some of her more well-known works. So if you like history, particularly Wisconsin history, um, it's definitely a good read. How about you, Sam? What are you reading? Well, this was a tough choice for me because I, I'm not from the upper Midwest originally. I've been here, uh, gosh, almost 14 years now, 15 years. Uh, and when I first came, I read everything I could about the area, history, natural history, literature, uh, fiction, uh, you name it. Um, but my, my pick is, is a more recent book that I've, I've read, just that just really resonated with me. And maybe it's because of where I am in my life. Uh, it's Shotgun Love Songs by Nicholas Butler. And uh, Nicholas uh, Butler is an author who's based up in the Eau Claire area, who has had wonderful success uh, with writing these novels that take place in kind of a fictional Eau Claire, Wisconsin area. Uh, and there's a real sense of place that runs through all of his novels. Uh, it, it's, it, it doesn't over dominate, but you can definitely tell that you are in the upper Midwest, that you're in this, you know, smaller city area that there's, you know, surrounded by farms, but shotgun love songs. What I love about it is it is a story about men and men who are growing older and dealing with both the past and the future. And, uh, there's really so few books that, that really tackle that issue as well as he did in this book, uh, where it's just men who are revealing themselves for all, who they are, failures and foibles and good things and bad things and all. Uh, and it just resonated because it really was honest and unflinching. Uh, there, but um, I think it's just a great exploration 
of males and, and the issues that we're facing, but in a really elegant, readable way. And it's and not to say that this is only a book for men. I think anybody can read this book and just love this book. Uh, but the combination of sense of place and, and again, maybe just where I'm in my life, uh, the, the novel just resonated with me. Uh, and I've also had the chance to talk with him uh, a few times. And he is the nicest guy in the world, Nicholas uh, Butler is. But uh, it's, uh, it's just an excellent story, well told. And he's got others that are also well told, but this is the one I would recommend. Hey, Sam, did you know that the cover of that book is Pearl Street Books? Uh, yes, the, I, and that was, I guess I should have mentioned that as well. The, the cover of that book is a, a kind of colorized or digitized version of downtown La Crosse. Even though it doesn't take place in La Crosse, they used our, uh, our, our, our street corners there to, to, uh, to show the book, which is a wonder, another wonderful reason to, to read it, at least in this area. Well, Beth Hartung, I really appreciate you joining us today and telling us all about your experiences thus far uh, as the newer, uh, the new owner at uh, Pearl Street Books. Uh, I know that you're doing amazing things down there and great things in the community, and we're looking forward to more. And we hope that maybe in a, you know another year or so, you can come back and join us and tell us a little bit more about what you've been learning and what you've been discovering. But thank you so much for being a cornerstone of our community. Thanks for having me.